Richard, I'm wondering what you think yeah. of um, Nike's approach there, and to what extent is it an issue what companies are saying about this situation versus what they're doing with their dollars or with their advocacy efforts? Uh, where do they need to go from here? This is a moment for brands to stand up. Brands connect us to culture. Brands actually show us the better part of our spirit. And brands have every ability now to speak up about racism and violence. I'm sickened about what happened with George Floyd. And I'm stunned that that happened in my America. And brands can show us the way forward. And the smart brands are already doing so. Um, if you're Ben and Jerry's, for instance, you're not just running an ad. You're actually saying that you're going to employ people who serve jail terms. Uh, and if you're Shea Moisture, you're already funding uh, startups and, and small businesses owned um, by people of color. That's exactly the way to play the game. It has to not just be about communication. It has to be about action. Uh, Richard, I, I just happened last night to be watching, I think it was episode five of Last Dance, where Michael Jordan had that infamous line, Republicans buy sneakers, too, uh, ab about his not coming out against Jesse Helms in his home state of North Carolina. Some people were disappointed in him in that, but he, he was saying his role is, hey, he's, he's a business, he's a brand, and that's, that's the uh, position he decided to take. What about that? I mean, Jordan famously connected to Nike, of course, but this is a very different tack that business is taking. Are there risks here? Should businesses go the Michael Jordan direction or the 2020 Nike direction? And, and, and what are the puts and takes there? We're at a time very similar to globalization protests in the late 90s. You know, people going and looting stores last night are saying something important, which is, I want to hit you where it hurts. Capitalism, pay attention. Business has the opportunity to step into the void left by government. We have every need to do this because two-thirds of people today are belief-driven buyers, and they exercise brand democracy every time that they go into a store, and they want to know that their brands actually speak up for them, stand with them, that they actually want a company that's decent, a Starbucks that says, yes, we will go and hire people of color and make sure that they get the chance to participate in our economy. And they did that five years ago, Opportunity Youth, and that's continued. And so the best part of business today is stand up and be counted because we're needed. We have to step into the void. And the White House itself. Hey, Richard, uh, this is Carl. It's good to see you. Hey, uh, how are you doing? You know, for so long, we've heard, we've heard two things for so long. One is that brands don't want to be associated with any content that's controversial. They don't want placement that's controversial. And the other is that they're nervous about alienating some portion of their clientele that doesn't agree with their message. So what's happened to those two parts of conventional wisdom? So we actually studied this, Carl, and found that uh, people don't want news blackout. They don't want uh, brands to go silent, whether it's during COVID or during this um, period of re reopening America. They want to hear from brands. They want to have a good quality source of information, and they want to be inspired. They want stories that they can identify with. They want to be feeling as if they have a hope and a future. And brands uniquely can do this, especially with young people. You know, so many young are looking for information on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, et cetera. And the privileged position that brands have is having inextricable relationships. And it's not about buying brands for status. It's about what they stand for now. And so, again, the belief-driven buyer will use pocketbook democracy. And that's the indicator for brands to speak up and act. And really that act point is the most important thing. Change your supply chain, hire people of color, make sure that uh, your own senior executives are working on nonprofit boards in affected communities so that they get uh, able to, to serve those um, affected you know, communities.